Hi, Kathy. What are you looking for? Uh, today I'm looking at cucumbers. I'm looking for thrip. Ah, this is Kathy Smith, a professional pest management scout. And Kathy has her own business known as Agricultural Pest Management, and, and she's been working with us on a number of research projects here with the University of Florida. Kathy, what exactly is a pest management scout? Well, I'm a bug hunter. And what, uh, what I do is I look at, at plants for insects and diseases, and I'm looking usually spending a lot of time on the underside of the leaves looking for insects because that's where most of them are. It's really trying to be an early warning for any kind of plant problems. And Kathy, I know you have spent a lot of time working with us on our projects use, project using reflective mulch mm -hmm. to try to serve as a means of keeping some of the insects from getting into the greenhouse and we've had that trial here at the research center and also on a couple of cooperating farms. And in this case, the metallized mulch was put down on the outside of the greenhouses to see if we could prevent some of the insects, especially whitefly, from getting into the greenhouse. What, what kinds of results were you able to find in those trials? Well, the, the trial really has been very exciting because the, the results have been dramatic. Uh, up to tenfold or better uh, reduction in the number of whiteflies in the house where the metallized mulch was applied. Really exciting stuff. That's really great. And there's not very many places, in fact, I don't know of any other place where that particular work is being done right now. So we're at the, at the front edge of that research here with the University of Florida. And probably the best location for us to have that comparison was at one of the farms where there was two independent structures, two independent greenhouses, and we were able to put mulch around one of them and not around the other one. And in those trials, Kathy, what, uh, what kinds of techniques have you been using to, uh, de to detect some of those populations? Well, probably the first thing I've been using is the yellow sticky card, where I, uh, we're hoping to attract white flies and other, and other insects like thrip. But for white flies, I would examine the, the card and see the, see the number of white flies stuck to the card. Also, then in the same greenhouses, is do actual plant examinations, a regular scout, where I'm looking at the undersides of the leaves, looking for the, for the white flies and other insects. And I guess in the yellow sticky traps, uh, they're attracted to the bright yellow color, maybe thinking it's a bloom or something like that. That is correct. Yes, they're and, very much uh, attracted to yellow. And the sticky surface there, once they venture into the sticky trap, they're not going to get back off and uh, very cooperative so that we can, we can <laughs> take some counts, counts on uh, that. during the week. Uh, how frequently were you taking those insect counts? Uh, the fall work, I was uh, twice a week, uh, giving us real good information for for the, uh, the fall trials. In the winter, then I would do probably more towards a once a week pattern. And the weekly scouting technique uh, situations allow us to keep pretty good tabs on, on the insect populations. If you went much more than that, I know a lot of things can move can in get and, and, get, and get away from you in a hurry. Have you seen instances where some of these exclusion techniques have, have been successful and other areas where maybe they haven't been implemented that, that they've actually uh, created a, a problem with some of the insects? Well, that, that's very true. The layering effect seems to really work where you use all of the, the methods of exclusion to provide the effect. Places where they've only employed the metallized mulch but not the insect screening perhaps, you don't get the same result and also where there might be an opening, any kind of opening, you won't get the same uh, response. So it's the layering effect that really seems to, to produce the best result. So no one no technique, one technique is gonna, is gonna, is gonna do the, it. It's the entire package. I know in, in my experiences, a lot of times the insect populations seem to get started near the area where the air comes into the greenhouse. So if they don't have it well screened, uh, that area next to the evaporative cooling pad in a greenhouse is, seems to be a highly uh, suspicious area for insect populations to get started. Actually, it was very easy to see that this fall with the sticky cards. We had sticky cards near the, near the pad area, or near the entrances, and you could see a definite uh, increase or a higher number on those traps than elsewhere in the greenhouse. And there's another style of greenhouse that some folks are using that we know is either passively or naturally ventilated where there are no fans so that there's not one, one specific point where the air comes in. And a lot of times those greenhouses have a roof vent that opens. Will the insects up 15 or 20 feet high come in those uh, They'll openings? They'll definitely come in. Okay. Definitely come in. And in fact, um, I've seen a widespread virus because the opening was not screened. Uh, the white flies get in and have gotten in, and then uh, virus is the result. 
So the areas where the insect screening was utilized, uh, we didn't see as much no. of a population. No and virus. In the area where there was no screening employed, uh, we, we saw insects moving in there. Well, that's really good information to, uh, to know and see. And you know, there's another point too, is that one of the things I found with the fall trial is that um, the number of insects that can be in a greenhouse when you don't have any plant material. So they're going to come so in. So they're going to come in no matter what, even without plant material. So it's a, maybe a good idea to have some sticky cards in, in place prior to planting. Okay. Well, that's an excellent, excellent tip. If we were to employ all of these various strategies to exclude the insects from coming into the greenhouse, is that going to guarantee us that we're not going to have any pests? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. They will still find our way in. Just, just wishful thinking, yes. I guess. Um, if we do get a few insect pockets that begin to develop in the greenhouse, maybe white flies or thrips or, or aphids, uh, what are, are the grower's options at that point? Well, there's really two, I guess, biological control or some kind of chemical control. Okay, and in the biological control options, we would be releasing some type of predators or parasites that are specific to those insects. That's and uh, it, it becomes a little bit complicated, I think, in using biological control where we've got these virus uh, related pest problems. If it wasn't for the virus transmission, the biological control would be a really good strategy. That's right. Um, but in the situations where we have to do some spraying, uh, are, there, are there many options available to greenhouse growers that, uh, that they can use? Well, certainly not as many as in the field situation. They need to select uh, the most, you know, the softest chemical they can choose that will get the job done. Uh, coverage, of course, is key. Okay, so because a lot of these insects are on the, on the under undersurface, uh, we've got to have, have excellent coverage before we can expect any, any uh, control there. And I think the other things that, that worry me a little bit, if we have to resort to some spray issues, uh, we, we harvest these crops very frequently and we have pre-harvest intervals that we have to pay attention to. And also the, the, the workers that are doing the spray application, there's a higher level of exposure when they're, when they're making those applications. And also in these isolated greenhouses, we probably are uh, intensifying the possibility that an insect can develop resistance to a particular material if we have to use that same material over and over and over again. Right, I think so you're correct, Paul. I think that all of that to me says that we got to do as good a job as we can to employ as many of those exclusion strategies as we possibly can to try to help battle these insects. Right, I, and I agree. And the, the way I always look at it is either the pests manage you or you manage the pests. Yeah. Well, let's hope that with some of these exclusion techniques that we can do a better job of managing them because right. the alternative is not pretty. It's not. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Bob.